So far what we have is our managed login bean that contains the username and password that the user provided. And now let's enable security. So we're going to go to our application, secure, configure ADF security, and let's specify that we're doing both authentication and authorization. So authentication just means that the user passed their credentials. Authorization means that once they've been authenticated that they can actually access the resources that they're trying to access according to you know their group permissions. Okay so we're going to use form-based authentication and then point to our login.jspx right there. Here's our error page right there. We're not going to perform any automatic grants for the test all role. And we're also not going to redirect upon authentication because our code is already doing that for us. Okay, so we hit finish. Next, I'm going to create users. Once again, go to secure. You'll see that this is editing the JASON data.xml file. I'm going to create a new user called Bob. Like this. Okay. And then another user right here. This will be Julie. And then we're going to create an enterprise role called manager group. We're going to add just Bob to that group. And now we're going to create a new application role and we'll call this manager. So it's always the best practice to uh, separate the users, not have the users uh, directly be associated with application roles. Rather, you want to associate users with enterprise roles and then enterprise roles with application roles. Okay, so now that we have that, okay, we're going to have those be related to each other. So let's just review this. Users. Bob belongs to manager group. Manager group belongs to manager. And then we want to look at the grants that are given to manager. So I'm interested in web pages. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We've got our error and login pages. Those automatically were given page definition files. Um, those page def files aren't necessary though because we're not uh, trying to access any bindings or anything. So we can delete that. And we can also go into our data bindings. We should go into the data bindings and uh, get rid of these references here as well. Alternatively, you could just make sure that uh, both of them have the anonymous role associated with it. It would be fine, but I just like to clean this up. Let me get rid of these two guys right in here as well. Now let's go back here my protected page, I do want to have that protected, right? So right now it is a public page. There's no page definition file associated with it. I can right click and say go to page definition. Now look what happened here. The icon has changed. I can now grant this to an application role. I'm going to make that available only to manager. Okay. And so now we're finished with that. And if you want, you can create a totally public page that links to the login page if you want, or you can just go directly to the login page. I'm just going to right click on here real quick. And now we're going to run this page and let's log in as Bob. And you'll see that we're able to access this protected page. Now if we run this again, but this time as user Julie, you'll see that we'll get the unauthorized page. So there you have it. That's how you create your ADF login page that explicitly calls your ADF authentication servlet. I hope you found this video tutorial very informative. Please visit our website at www.fireboxtraining.com.